Brad Hutchinson versus Garrett Ian. Uh, remain standing and identify yourselves for the record. I'm Bradford Hutchinson. My name is Garrett Ian. I swear for a firm that the testimony you give this morning is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and the pains and penalties of perjury. I do swear to affirm that the testimony I have given this morning is true and complete to the best of my knowledge and ability of the pains and penalties of perjury. I affirm my honesty. Thank you. Uh, you can be seated, Mr. Ian, Mr. Hutchinson. Uh, just for the record, if you would remain standing. Yes, if you would remain standing. Yes, uh, I, uh, if you would just tell me why it is you're asking for a stock order. I think you're still asking for a stock order of protection. That is correct, Your Honor. Uh, I would submit that all of the original conditions still exist. Everything that I have previously written in regards to this matter still stands. And in addition, subsequent to that filing, um, sorry, I don't have the date right off the top of my head, um, the Colbert Report uh, aired a short video clip which Mr. Ian filmed of me and then posted onto the internet from where the Colbert Report took this clip of myself and broadcast it globally on Comedy Central on the Colbert Report in a segment that they did about the uh, Robin Hood or just three teen activities where Mr. Gary Ian was prominently featured. There was a short segment Second question is approximately five to six minutes long. It begins with a short introduction by Stephen Colbert and then goes into a voiceover narration of film of the activities of Robin Hooders and Free Keen, including Mr. Garrett Keene, who is featured prominently. There are several brief clips of individuals from the community expressing their displeasure with the behaviors of Robin Hooders, Free Keen, and specifically Mr. Garrett Keene including myself, Your Honor. And uh, that, again, was a video Mr. Keene made of me some time ago, approximately a year and a half, two years ago. He made a video of me, posted it on the internet, posted it on his website for commercial purposes, I submit. Um, in all honesty, Your Honor, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know what I think about it. It's very strange, very, very strange to be walking around town and have somebody come up to me and say, hey, I saw you on TV. And uh, I find it deeply, deeply distressing. I only want to be left alone by these individuals, all of them. I have no uh, animus towards any of them specifically. Um, some of their behavior I don't like. Also, what has changed since uh, filing these is I have reassessed my response to and reaction to previous incidents. And at this point, although there's nothing on paper, I haven't filed anything, it's my intention to go to the Keene Police Department, file a report, and seek the arrest of uh, Mr. Rich Paul and Mr. David Crawford and Mr. Garrett Keene. The charge would be uh, simple assault. The incident involving Mr. Garrett Keene is briefly documented by myself in the original stalking petition. That is when uh, the incident where Mr. Keene was riding his bicycle on the sidewalk downtown in violation of Keene City Ordinance, and he collided with me in front of witnesses. That uh, incident is briefly related in the original petition. Um, at the time, I chose to, uh, pardon my English, suck it up, so to speak, you know, take one for the team, do not see it uh, for what it was. However, uh, also subsequent, and again, this is nothing that I filed, um, in attempting to see this uh, video of myself, which people have reported to me. I don't own a television set or watch TV on a regular basis or at all, really. Um, I wanted to see this video. I found another video where Mr. Union is indicating that his intention is to provoke a reaction and hopefully to provoke a violent reaction and to get film of that to, again, post on the internet and post for commercial purposes, which is his apparently primary and only activity is stalking people and attempting to provoke them into some kind of reaction so that he has a more interesting video on the internet. And I in, could, if I had a little bit of assistance, could easily be presenting a comprehensive case showing Mr. Keene and his associates uh, to engage on a regular basis in what can only be fairly described as gang stalking. 
and it was something that I didn't know about growing up, but it is an organization of individuals who have come together for several purposes. Some may ostensibly be good purposes, however, it is a cover for other nefarious purposes. As we've seen, Mr. Ian and his associates at Free Keen and Robin Hooders have used that as cover for dealing drugs. Mr. Rich Paul was convicted in his court of dealing drugs. I don't mean just cannabis. Uh, also, more serious drugs, which are research chemicals, essentially, um, that Mr. Rich Paul freely and openly sold in the streets of Keene, including downtown. Uh, Ms. Harrison, again, <laughs> so, and I'll, I'll let you go, okay. but, but this is a very specific Thank stock you. petition that you filed against Ms. Reen. Can you I tell me why, why it is you're asking, and, and, and I've reviewed it, um, can you tell me, uh, are, you, uh, are you in fear of Mr. Ian? Yes and no. I'm in mortal fear of Mr. Ean and his associates. Am I specifically afraid of Mr. Ean in the sense of is he going to physically attack me? I don't think so in that sense. Um, however, his activities are such that what I'm requesting from the court is a court order that basically says, hey, leave this guy alone. That's, that's the reason I ask, Mr. Hutchinson is, Hutchinson, is that there are very specific statutory requirements for somebody to get a stocking order. And uh, is there anything more that you want, you want to tell me beyond about facts that would support a stocking order against Mr. Ian uh, as set forth in the statute? Uh, is there any, anything more that you can tell me in support of your, your petition? I have not had a chance to study the statute, so I understand your question. I don't think that I can speak to it more specifically than I have, other than to say, I hope that I have clearly and adequately communicated the distress and extreme mental anguish that these people have put me under um, by their actions. They just won't leave me alone, Your Honor. I just want to live my life. I have plenty to do. I have plenty of work to do. It has nothing to do with these people. I want nothing more than to just have them leave me alone. If that's all that happens, I'll be happy, Your Honor. And I. All I want and will continue to do is leave them alone. I think that Keene is a big enough community. They leave me alone and I leave them alone. It shouldn't be a further problem. However, seeing the way the situation escalates, knowing that they are tenacious, I need protection of the courts. And that's what I'm requesting, Your Honor. And I realize it's just a piece of paper. It won't prevent something physical from happening, but it would give me some recourse and standing to further protect myself in the community, Your Honor, and that's what I'm seeking. And, and, and just so you know, mm -hmm. what, I'm, what I'm going to be guided by are the, spe are the specific uh, statutory provisions that apply to whether or not uh, an adequate uh, factual basis has been laid out for, for whether you're entitled to a, a stalking order of protection from me in, the, in this case. Thank you, sir. May I sit down? Yes. Thank you. Uh, do you have any additional witnesses? No, not at this time. <clears throat> Mr. Ian, would you like to say anything? You don't have to say anything, but you're certainly free to address the court. Yes, certainly. Um, I've been living in Keene, New Hampshire since June of 2012, and I've been familiar with Mr. Hutchinson since shortly after arriving here. He's uh, an easy to spot individual downtown often. Um, individuals I knew had stories about him, thought he was kind of crazy, but had never said that he was violent or that he was ever threatening to them. Um, I had interactions with Mr. Hutchinson on numerous occasions, some of them documented on film. Um, in one instance in January of 2013 is when I saw a sort of troubling behavior from him. Myself, another person named Chris Cantwell, and another person named Bo Davis uh, were in front of City Hall, and he had a strong animus against Mr. Davis, and he was insisting that he leave town, he was accusing him of being a cocaine dealer, and they were having an interaction on film. I was mostly ignoring them. Um, at one point during that interaction, Mr. Hutchinson was saying to Mr. Davis, I bet that I could provoke you to violence. I bet that I could, do you dare me? I have the, the video documentation of that. Um, so even though no violence occurred on that day, there was a sort of uh, troubling interaction that Mr. Hutchinson was involved with as far as his words towards Mr. Davis. Um, he seemed to be attention seeking on that day, contrary to what he was testifying to today. He walked directly up to Mr. Campbell's camera and began speaking directly into it. Um, was very close to it, maybe about a foot away from it. 
Um, so he seemed to be seeking the attention of people with cameras on that day. Um, I was mostly ignoring him. Um, on February 6th of 2013, I had my first very troubling interaction with Mr. Hutchinson in which he uh, threatened me with a can of pepper spray. This was witnessed by Parking Enforcement Officer Jane McDermott. Um, he approached me, I noticed he was approaching, so I began to get my camera ready thinking it would just be some sort of interesting interaction. Um, he walked to within two feet away from me and put a canister of what appears to be pepper spray or mace into my face. Um, began waving it around and saying uh, things like, do you dare me, do you dare me, or something like that. I, was, I held my camera out at my side to document how close this canister was to my face. Um, I had the video of that with me as well. Um, as I was backing away from that incident, I didn't realize it was a canister at the time. I thought he was just waving some, maybe a cell phone or something in my face. It wasn't until I watched the video later I saw that it was some sort of canister. Um, I pushed his arm away and I said, you can't do that to people. He said, I just did. When I tried moving away from him, he would sidestep to block my path. Um, I tried sidestepping and walking around him and he bumped into me and grabbed my head like this. I just pushed him away. He seemed rather frail. I, I said, what the F are you doing, man? And he was saying how he was going to get me charged with assault and that in Judge Burke's courtroom, he'd be more believed than I would. Um, I have video of that entire interaction from February 6th. On February 7th, he had an interaction with Mr. Graham Coulson downtown in which he was uh, doing a similar thing to Mr. Coulson, though not involving a pepper spray canister, where he was blocking his path, trying to remain in front of him, sidestepping him, chest bumping him. Um, I mostly avoided, after that interaction with Mr. Hutchinson, I mostly tried to avoid him, tried not to give him any attention. Um, I, I was considering filing criminal charges against him for the incident involving the pepper spray canister and when he grabbed my head. At the time, I decided not to. In retrospect, I do wish I had. Um, on October 24th of 2013, um, or actually I should say before that, I don't have video of an interaction prior to that, but um, there was a time at which prior to, it was I believe in the beginning of October, I was riding my bicycle in the bike path downtown I was traveling north on Main Street, you know, near Railroad Square, and Mr. Hutchinson was walking down the sidewalk. He exited the sidewalk and walked into the bike lane, so as to intentionally obstruct the bike lane with his body. Um, that was a rather dangerous situation. I checked for traffic and averted into the road to avoid him. Um, later that day, um, I unfortunately don't think I have any video of this interaction, but I did talk to Joel Chidester of the Keene Police Department, and I informed him that Brad Hutchinson had obstructed the bike lane with his body and that that was dangerous, and that if I said to him, don't do that, he probably wouldn't care, but if the, the police had mentioned something to him, I'm sure he would take it more seriously. Um, I didn't follow up any further about that incident. I, wasn't, I never expressed any interest to file charges about that incident, I just mentioned it to him as an aside. Um, and then it was on October 24th um, that Mr. Hutchinson, he mentioned that incident today, I guess, where he was claiming to have been assaulted. Um, I was riding my bicycle on October 24th north um, on the sidewalk from the pedestrian island onto the sidewalk in front of Pedraza's. Mr. Hutchinson was talking to an individual that was sitting on a bench. When he saw me coming, he took a few steps to get into my path and stood there. I put on my brakes and stopped in front of him, and he took one or two steps forward and almost sat on the front tire of my bike, sort of, with his body, and was like, hey, you need to watch where you're going. You bumped into me. Um, so I got away from him, turned on my camera, and went back to him and asked him why he was obstructing people, um, why he was uh, standing on the sidewalk like that. What Mr. Hutchinson did in response, rather than answering my questions, was to duck down and get very close to my camera, and I began backing away from him. As I began backing away, he was following very closely behind me. I was walking my bicycle, and he was behind me uh, following closely. So close, so, uh, so much that his like, legs and his, his stomach were sort of bumping the rear wheel of the bicycle as he was approaching me. I was holding a camera on a grip that was pointed to the rear, and he was leaning his face into the camera um, from, of course, a very close proximity. I found that to be strange behavior. Um, I walked a few, I took a few different uh, like paces back and forth to see if he would just go a different direction, and he didn't. He kept following me. I said that we could do that walk all the way to the police station if he wanted, and that was when he disengaged. Um, on uh, November 16th, I believe it was, of 2013, 
uh, independent journalist Dave Ridley was out filming and saw Bradford Hutchinson and asked him about his assaults on myself. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson's response was to get very, very close to Mr. Ridley's camera about a foot away from it um, and just stand there silently. Um, he didn't seem to have a response to that sort of behavior other than to stand very close to someone. That is correct. Um, on Did you assault April 1st of 2010, I'll give you an opportunity to respond, but I'm going to listen to Mr. Ian now, and then I'll give you a chance to respond. <coughs> Mr. Ian, okay. On April 1st of 2014, uh, Mr. Hutchinson uh, engaged Mr. Graham Coulson uh, on another time. Um, I was not present for this, but Mr. Coulson showed me a video of this incident. It also involved Mr. Rich Paul. And it was when Mr. Coulson was downtown filling parking meters, uh, Mr. Hutchinson got very close to him and was saying, excuse me, sir, can you spare some change over and over again? And he was getting very close to Mr. Coulson to the point where he was bumping his chest. Mr. Coulson is holding his camera and saying, please get away from me. Please stop it. You're assaulting me. He continued to engage in that behavior. Um, Rich Paul was nearby and yelling for him to back away from him. Um, ultimately, Rich Paul places himself between Bradford and Graham. And Bradford seemed to disengage Graham once Rich did that by just moving himself uh, with his back facing Bradford which I thought was a pretty courageous thing for Mr. Paul to do given the circumstances that if somebody is being aggressive, you would give them your back. But he must have trusted that Mr. Hutchinson wasn't going to do anything to him, and he didn't. Um, that interaction ended with a very long conversation between Mr. Rich Paul and Mr. Colson and Mr. Hutchinson. Um, the most troubling interaction I ever had with Mr. Hutchinson was on May 20th of uh, this year, and it was an instance at night. It's the only time I believe I've ever interacted with Mr. Hutchinson at night. Um, I was downtown with a friend of mine, Mariah. We were uh, putting chalk on the sidewalk. She was up towards Central Square, and I was quite a ways down Main Street, um, close to where Michelle's restaurant used to be. Um, I was squatted down on the sidewalk, chalking a smiley face on the ground, when I heard very fast footsteps coming from behind me. Um, all of a sudden, I felt somebody grab my neck, and I was pulled three or four feet into the room. Give a chance, Mr. President, but this case is pending the Superior Court, Your Honor. Uh, basically, I'm hearing uh, testimony. I'm sorry if I should have stood. I'm two questions. One is relevance and the length of time. And Mr. Ian is essentially testifying in a matter that's pending in criminal. Well, I, I understand that, but you brought a stalking petition I alleging that. alleging that 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 you're uh, essentially uh, what what he's talking about are some of the facts. That relate to uh, the ongoing interaction that you've had. That's 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 a separate matter. Whether or not uh, whether or not you choose to address that is certainly your choice. You're here without counsel. You don't have to address that. But if you choose to address that, uh, what you say could, if you choose to respond to that directly, what you what you say could be used against you uh, in, in a criminal trial. But I do find that it's relevant to uh, to the discussion of the stock petition that you brought. So your objection is overruled. Please continue, Mr. Ian. Um, so after I felt a hand grab my neck while I was in a squatted position, um, I had been pulled like three or four paces. And at this point, I was from the sidewalk. I was on just the edge of the road. Fortunately, there was no traffic coming. Um, upon feeling that I was grabbed and pulled, I threw up my arms and said, hey, let go of me, or something like that. Um, the person did then let go of me and just continue walking off. Um, when I got to my feet and I saw who it was, I saw that it was Bradford Hutchinson. I had a camera on me. I turned on my camera. Um, I then I got I tried to get in front of him, but still a far distance away from him, and asking him questions. Why did you just grab me? Um, why do you think you can grab people? Things like that. He denied knowing who I was. He said, "Aren't you one of those Robin Hooders?" He didn't. Uh, he didn't address my question as to why he had just attacked me. Um, I told him that he wouldn't be attacking me anymore because I would be taking this to the police and uh, he disengaged and walked off. Um, that night, I went to the police station, uh, filed a report with them about that incident. I also listed several of the other instances that were mentioned here today and the videos from those instances. Um, the police uh, filed, uh, I guess they filed a charge, arrested Mr. Hutchinson, and it was the day of his district court trial, um, which he, uh, he decided not to have and instead appealed to a jury trial, that he said he would be filing a stalking petition and I guess that's what brings us here today. Um, as far as the petition itself, uh, having looked through it, um, it says things like, does the defendant have access to firearms or weapons? I'm not sure why Mr. Hutchinson would think that. 
Just going on to things that were mentioned by Mr. Mr. Hutchinson in the petition, he mentions an incident in which I was interacting with the inspector, Fred Parcells. And uh, Mr. Parcells had been dr uh, driving in a somewhat unsafe manner on Main Street. Um, I approached him on Elm Street with that concern, and I believe that's what Mr. Hutchinson is referencing in here. Um, I would assert that my ability or, or my right to interact with Keene City officials uh, supersedes Mr. Hutchinson's right to be away from me. In fact, the court has ruled just the opposite. The district court has submitted that uh, he is to have no contact with me. He's not supposed to be within 300 feet of me. Um, despite that, there have been a few instances in which he has been and somewhat remained within 300 feet of me. Um, I've never made any sort of reports because I've never felt that on those instances that he's been threatening of me. Um, but just the fact that he was near me and, and choosing not to really walk away, I found surprising. Um, on October 23rd of this year, um, Mr. Hutch, I was walking near the Keene Sentinel building um, and parking force of Jane McDermott was down Federal Street uh, writing a ticket. I had just filled some meters near there. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson was walking towards the direction of Central Square um, and I noticed that Mr. Hutchinson was on the side of the street that I was on, not the opposite side of West Street, um, but like the side towards Federal Street. Um, I went a little ways down Federal Street and Mr. Hutchinson stood at the end of uh, where Federal Street and West Street meet. I'm not sure exactly how far away it is, maybe the distance of where like that the chair is against the wall. Um, but Mr. Hutchinson had seen me and then like turned his back and just stood in that position. So I believe that would have been a violation of his no contact order. Um, he then proceeded to, I, I then, um, I think he, he went uh, a little ways away. I crossed the street, went down the street. He followed uh, parking, uh, the parking enforcer, Jane McDermott, was on one side of West Street and I was on the north side. And uh, he then began walking and talking with parking enforcer McDermott up the street as I walked the street on the opposite end. That is less than 300 feet, so he's not really supposed to be doing that for the contact, no contact order. Um, there was also a community forum held at Keene State College on December 2nd, so just last week, a few days ago. The college party scene riots, hanging outside agitators, drunk and drunk college students, like the miscreants that clown called college on Leverett Street. We've got Bozo the Clown here tonight. We're always going to have that. We can step up our police and security. We will shut down the riots in 2015. No riots next year, kids. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson, towards the end of his remarks, pointed at me and said, we've got Bozo the Clown here. And uh, it seemed unnecessary, and it seemed to be sort of a, maybe he wasn't directing it at me, but he seemed to be uh, a violation of his no-contact order, so. And um, as far as some of the things that Mr. Hutchinson had testified to today, um, my content is put onto the internet, Cheshire TV. It's, it's all, brought, all available for people to see. Um, as far as what's been produced by Comedy Central or uh, the Colbert Report, I have no control over what they produce with anyone else's content. Um, the, the idea that I am trying to provoke a, a reaction for commercial purposes, um, that's false on both counts. I'm not trying to provoke a reaction, and I don't do it for commercial purposes. Um, my videos are because I do activism. I believe it's art. I want people to engage in more media. Um, I'm not trying to provoke anyone's reaction, and that's why when I found that he was a threat to myself back in February of last year, I avoided Mr. Hutchinson as much as possible. Um, he brought up a lot of a lot of individuals that aren't myself, as in reference to this order, of course. I don't see how that would be relevant to an order against myself. I think that Mr. Hutchinson has uh, mental issues that may not be being addressed. I've been told, I wasn't listening to this radio uh, program on one instance, but I was told by someone named Steve Lindsay that he had called into a radio show on WKBK uh, relative to the Robin Williams Memorial and had threatened to self-immolate himself that if he had been removed. And of course, I'd say that is indicative of someone that needs some help uh, about like you know placing priorities and whatnot. So uh, yeah, given, given the, the situation, I'd say that uh, Mr. Hutchinson does present a, some sort of a threat to myself. Um, he said that he's not afraid that I might attack him, but I certainly am afraid that he might at any time attack me because of the instances that he's engaged in in the past. Thank you, Mr. Ian. Mr. Hutchinson, anything further, sir? There are a number of uh, points that I could bring up. Uh, I want to be mindful of the court's time and not take the uh, 
half hour, 45 minutes or hour that I could easily respond, but just briefly, um, I want to be as relevant as possible to the stocking petition. Really, and, and, and that's I, the issue before me today. It's I not a broader question about, about Let me get right to the specific incidents where Mr. Eane, uh, since Mr. Eane's brought it up in self-defense, I have to bring it up too. I believe that Mr. Eane is suffering from narcissistic personality disorder. And Mr. Eane has a diagnosable personality disorder. Mr. Eane wants to bring up my mental issues, which personally I believe that they're irrelevant. Uh, I don't believe that a person's mental state is in and of itself a factor of where they go or whether they're in proximity to somebody. As I've expressed before, I only want to be left alone and leave alone Mr. Green and all persons associated with him. That's my only purpose here today. Mr. Green has spoke about my behavior that he's observed out in the community in very recent weeks. And Mr. Green, as far as I know, has no specific or fixed schedule for where he goes and what he does. I myself do not. I also don't have that. I live downtown. Mr. Green does not. I live uh, right next, right behind the fire station, right downtown. In order for me to get anywhere in town, pretty much, I have to go through downtown. I enjoy going downtown on a regular basis. I go to the coffee shops and restaurants. Um, I have to be aware that Mr. E might be somewhere and that I have to avoid him. And uh, until Matt, these matters are settled, uh, as much as I don't want to have to do that, the circumstances are such that I do have to do that. Everywhere I go, I have to look out for Garrett Dean and his associates and make sure that I don't have any interaction with them. I might, uh, I have had to adjust my schedule, my behavior, my travels, where I go, what I do. Um, most specifically, uh, Mr. Dean mentions the uh, community forum relative to Pumpkin Fest. What I referred to, uh, I was referring to myself, Your Honor, where this vest is quite colorful colorful vested interest as it were um bozo the clown is in the room your honor i am myself a performer i apologize for a little bit of levity um this hearing has already gone on longer than i expected that it would uh this case is not without its humorous side uh, i think what i'm here today to show you that i take the court seriously mr ean has shown you that he doesn't take this court any more seriously than he takes any other proceeding by his appearance. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with jeans and a flannel shirt, but it shows that there was no attempt on Mr. Ean's part to prepare himself for a court given the gravity and seriousness of the proceedings. And uh, I do take them very, very seriously, Your Honor, and I have a respect for the court that I believe Mr. Ean has not demonstrated yet. And I have respect for persons that Mr. Ean has not demonstrated. I'm not going to address more specifically these charges. It, uh, I was not in violation of the release orders. The last thing that I would do is violate uh, condition of release and we're clear on what they are. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson, I, I'm prepared to rule now uh, from the bench on the stocking petition. The statute, statute is very clear about the conditions under which it, it's appropriate to grant a, no, only you need to stand. Uh, under, under which it's appropriate to, to grant a, a stocking order, uh, and and that statutory criteria has not been made uh, this morning in the presentation before the court. So I'm going to dismiss the stocking petition. This matter is concluded. Thank you, Your Honor.